What you guys got another video here for you on how to make Windows 10 better. Well, many people still use Windows 10 instead of Windows 11. The market share is still with Windows 10. So I'm going to show you how to make Windows 10 even better, even if you have Windows 10 Home, which a lot of people do have. Now, we know that all of this privacy settings and things like that are already set in place, which is harvesting data and slowing down the machine. But there is a way to deal with this, which I've mentioned in my previous video, where I said I would make a video showing you how to do this on Windows 10 Home, which means you don't have the option for Group Policy Editor because it doesn't come with Group Policy in the Windows 10 Home Edition. And that means you're going to have to go into the registry and make tons of registry tweaks. But this is where Policy Plus comes in and makes it a lot easier to make these edits to your system using something similar to the group policy editor that Microsoft offer, Policy Plus uh, does a lot of that for you. So let's go ahead and download this. I'm going to put the link in the video description for you. This tool is a great way of controlling uh, what Microsoft receives from you on your computer, i.e. in data collecting. You can control a lot of this by using the Policy Plus so when you first download it, it says home editions do not come with the full set of policies. So you need to say yes here uh, to download them and then click begin to download all of these onto the system. And this is going to allow us to make uh, crucial changes to our system to make it much more suitable for us and obviously less uh, bloated, which is what Microsoft seem to want you to use because they can harvest all of your information. So let's go ahead and set this up. So this is Policy Plus. Basically, like I said, you've got users, uh, computer, or user and computer. We're going to leave it on user or computer. And we're going to start off with the uh, Windows Components area here. Now, this is a lot easier to navigate than Group Policy Editor as well. And it's all been put into locations here. So we're going to go to App Privacy first. This is going to deal with all of those privacy concerns in the privacy area which is obviously a lot of areas that people don't want to deal with now i'm not going to go through every one of these but i normally turn all of these to enabled and have this set to false deny so you can see here just enable it and set it to false deny i do this for all of these apart from uh, the microphone and the camera because most people use their microphone and most people use their camera when they're streaming or stuff like that. If you don't have no use for any of those, then you can disable all of them. But you can see they're all enabled apart from these two here, which is your microphone and camera. But if you don't have use for the camera, you can also disable that one as well. But normally most people will use a microphone on their system. So let's go ahead and just set this to false deny for the camera and just leave it for microphone only. Now with that done, you'll need to save these settings and you will see what actually uh, policy plus is done so let's go up to file and save policies and you can see policies have now been saved we can click ok and we can now quickly check and show you what it's actually doing to the system let's go to settings and go into privacy here and inside this location here you can see it's turned the location off and grayed it all out it's all been disabled the same thing for the microphone that's left on and that means now you can configure the microphone to your liking turn off all of the stuff you don't want like cortana and we're going to be disabling all cortana and uninstalling it anyway so it doesn't really matter now as of right now we've only set the policies for app permissions which is on the left there we still need to do windows permissions but we've already taken care of the app permissions which is this lot lower down and you can see some of these settings are hidden or managed by your organization. This means they've been disabled and we can now continue using Policy Plus to configure our system so we don't have to deal with all of this stuff. Now, a lot of people get concerned about Windows updates and saying that once they do a Windows updates, these will all be reset. This is not the case with policies. They just are set in stone and they won't be reset. So let's move on to the next area. So that was the app privacy. Let's go to cloud content here. Now there's quite a few things in here, like do not show Windows tips, and we can basically either enable or disable. Now some of these will be enable and some of these will be disabled. 
you need to read the information on the right hand pane here and it will tell you exactly what this does and why you would need to disable it or enable it. It's that simple. So just go through the motions here and disable uh, some of the stuff that you don't want. And this is the beauty of Policy Plus or Group Policies. It gives you the power to disable or enable what you want to use on your computer. Instead of using a script which you have no control over, and when you run it, it will just disable a bunch of stuff, and you may want to use that particular uh, application or setting on Windows, and it's now disabled it, and you don't know how to reverse it. These are completely reversible. So all this is is Windows Spotlight and things like that, which is obviously going to harvest data. But what we'll do is we'll disable that feature and just use a normal picture or our slideshow or something like that if we want to use it. The consumer experiences is obviously, you know what that is. It's to do with Microsoft harvesting information. Again, Windows welcome experience. We can turn all of this stuff off because we don't need it. So either enable or disable depending on what it's telling you to do on that window there. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of all of these and we can move on to the next section once we've taken care of the cloud content area. Now this is a time consuming process, but once it's done, you don't have to do this again. Once you've got this set, you can export all your settings and then just import them if you ever format your PC. So you don't have to keep doing this. So we've just got one more to do here, which is to configure Windows Spotlight on the lock screen. Again, I'm not going to be using this, so I do want to uh, enable this feature. And you can see here, if we enable this feature, it will tell you if you disable this policy settings, Windows Spotlight uh, will be turned off. So we want to disable it, basically, uh, because it's then disabled. So this one is disabled rather than enable as you can see by reading the information here. So hit Disable, click OK, and you can then save your settings. Make sure you always save your settings before you close the app down, otherwise you'll have to go in and reconfigure all of these uh, again. So next we're going to move on down to Connect, and we'll take care of this one here. There's not a lot inside here. This is Do Not Allow the PC to be Projected to, and we're going to take care of that. And it says if you turn it off or don't configure it, your PC is discoverable. So if you turn it on, your PC isn't discoverable. So we're going to enable this feature because obviously it's telling us that we need to turn it on and it will make it non-discoverable. So let's go ahead and do that. And now that's done. So next, if you do need that feature, again, leave it well alone. Uh, next up is the data collection and preview builds. Again, there's a telemetry area here, which we obviously don't want. So we're going to enable that feature and set this to zero, which is security, which is enterprise only. But that will do. And there's a couple of other areas inside here, like allow commercial data pipeline and allow desktop analytics processing and a bunch of other ones that you will need to take care of. And again, we can do this by basically uh, enabling or disabling these. So read the information there and set it to the correct uh, setting. So the correct setting on this one is disable, and this will then disable that feature. And we'll have to do that for the desktop analytics processing as well. And you can see right there, if we disable it or do not configure this policy, diagnostic data, this device will not be processed by the desktop analytics. So we're going to do that right there. Next up, we're going to do the next one. And this is basically allow device name to be sent in Windows diagnostic data. But we're going to be uh, disabling the Windows diagnostic data. So we're going to disable this. And basically, it will not send any of that information. So these are all obviously to do with data harvesting and data collecting for Microsoft. Uh, this is the telemetry part. And again, Windows does have a lot of telemetry embedded into it, but you can control it somewhat with the policies that were set in right here. So let's go ahead and uh, do this one right here. And this one here, if we disable it or do not configure this policy setting diagnostic data from this device will not be processed by Windows updates. Now, there's a bunch of other ones here which are to do with the configure part, which is this one right here. Again, you can enable this feature, but leave it as disable 
authenticated proxy usage. And you can see if you read the information there, it will tell you it's basically opting out once we've configured this correctly. So what we'll do is we'll go through here and uh, enable this and do not allow sending uh, internet or internet history. And you certainly don't want them uh, delving into your uh, internet history. So this one is uh, configure connected user experiences and telemetry. Again, this is all to do with uh, the uh, telemetry collecting. So you can set this up to how you like. So just go through all of these and configure them. So this one here, if we uh, enable this policy, the delete diagnostic data button will be disabled in the settings panel. So we're going to enable that. So it's uh, disabled. And again, you can go right the way through here. So there's just a few more here what I'm going to be doing and uh, we can then move on. So let me go ahead and uh, quickly uh, do this one here. Do not show feedback notifications. So we're going to enable that feature. And again, this one right here, we want to enable this feature and then we want to disable uh, the actual Windows analytic collection. So we're going to do that one there. And this is the very last one that we can do right here. So let's disable this feature. So this is for the Windows Insider program settings will be unavailable if we disable uh, this feature. So let's go ahead and uh, disable it because we don't want to allow that uh, feature. That's now done. So that's all those dealt with. And what you can do here is going to quickly save these uh, policies. And then we can go ahead and take care of some of the other stuff that we need to take care of. Now, there is quite a few to go through. So let's go ahead and deal with the Edge UI first. And again, on, on the Edge UI, there's a allow Edge swipe, and there's also turn off tracking uh, of this app usage. So we definitely want to do that. So you can see here, if you disable or don't configure this policy, Windows will track uh, all of the apps that are used. So we definitely want to uh, enable that feature because otherwise it will track the information. So also disable help tips. We don't need help tips. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get rid of that as well. So if this setting is enabled, Windows will not show any help tips, which is very useful. And also the allow edge swipe. I don't need that feature, so we might as well disable it. And uh, so let's go ahead and do that one and disable it, as it says right here. So we're going to go ahead and hit disable. And that's now done. So that's that taken care of. Now, there's quite a few others that we can go through here. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next section. Let's take a look at Find My Device, and we can configure this one right here. And there's only one option in here, so that's uh, Turn On or Off, Find My Device. And we want to disable that feature. So let's go ahead and disable and click OK. And then we can move on down to, say, Messaging here. There's only one in here allow messaging service cloud sync. And again, this policy allows the backup or restore of the cellular text messages to Microsoft. Well, we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and go to maps next. And again, we don't want any maps. We don't use the maps on this system. So we can uh, remove any of this stuff uh, from the system. And it says if you disable this setting, the automatic download and update of maps is turned on. So we want to enable that feature. And the same thing will be said for the next one as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, enable that feature as well. And it says right there, enable this policy setting. Features that generate network traffic on the offline map setting page are turned off. So let's enable that. Okay, let's move on to the next one here, which is file history. I don't use file history on here, so might as well turn it off. It is just a service that is going to take up some resources. So we can basically turn that off by enabling it. Next, we're going to go into uh, Microsoft Defender Antivirus and go into Maps. And we're going to enable the Join Microsoft Maps and, and then disable it because this is obviously going to send uh, additional information back to Microsoft. So we don't want to uh, send that back and we want to opt out here. Now, Windows uh, Defender, you can either enable this or disable it. Some people don't like it on at all. And if that's the case, then you can turn it off. And it says turn off Microsoft Defender right here. Now, if you want to do that, you can do. Uh, but a lot of people don't use an antivirus program and they just leave Microsoft uh, Defender antivirus on the system running and they use that as their main 
uh, antivirus program, which is perfectly fine if you want to do that. But if you do want to turn it off, you can turn it off there. And there's even ways of removing it, but uh, that's another video. So text input, this is to deal with the improved inking and typing recognition. And we definitely want to uh, get rid of that. So let's go ahead and stop that from working. And we're going to turn that off. Now, search has a lot of areas that you can turn off, which is Cortana, and they have started to decommission Cortana, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to uh, remove it. It's going to be there still in the background, probably harvesting information. So you definitely want to go through here and disable the cloud search and uh, uh, disable Cortana and remove it. We are going to uninstall it, but the back end of it is probably still going to have some code left on the system and we definitely don't want that on the system. So let's go ahead and do what we can here by disabling a lot of the Cortana stuff here. Now, there's also some other things inside here as well. So we're going to disable the Cortana page in AAD. And it's also the location and do not allow web search and all that sort of stuff that you can uh, disable as well inside here. Now, if you use the Windows desktop uh, search for the web, uh, then you probably want to leave this not configured. But if you don't use that feature and you want to get rid of it, then you can just enable that feature right here and this will disable it and stop it working. So that's what we're going to do right there and then click OK. And that's one is set. Now, there is a few others in here. I'm not going to go through all of these, but there's some other ones like uh, prevent indexing of Microsoft Office Outlook, if you use Outlook, that's going to index it. And obviously this information could be sent back to Microsoft. I have covered that in other videos, but I'm not going to go right away through all of that in this video. Uh, otherwise, we'll be here all day. But again, uh, there's some other areas here that you can take care of. But I'll leave that to you to go through and disable or enable the stuff that you want to uh, get rid of here. Now, there is also some other things that you can deal with which is the Windows error reporting. A lot of people get a bit paranoid about information being sent back. And you can take care of that in this location right here by enabling and disabling a lot of these features. So you could just choose which ones you want. For instance, disable Windows error reporting. Again, if you enable this policy, Windows error reporting does not send information back to uh, Microsoft. And uh, you can uh, deal with that yourself if you want to disable that feature. And there's also some other stuff here, like automatically send memory dumps for operating system generated error reports back. You can uh, deal with that as well right here, and it will stop it going back uh, to Microsoft as well. It means you're opting out, basically. So just enable those features. And there's a, a couple of other ones here. Do not send... Uh, additional data and this is if we enable this policy setting any additional data requests from Microsoft in response to a Windows error report are automatically declined and that's what we definitely want to set that up so let's go ahead and set all of these up because we don't want and there's four of these because we don't want any additional information being sent back uh, to them and it will decline and say you're opting out of this option we don't want to get involved with it and that's basically that done. So we just need to apply these. Here's another one right here uh, inside the online assistance. Again, turn off active help if you want to do that. If you enable this policy, uh, active uh, content links are not uh, rendered. So we can turn that off by enabling it. And then we can move on to some other areas. Now there's news and interest, which is to do with the widgets. And there's also sound recorder. Uh, as well and steps recorder some people like to turn off uh, speech there's a bunch of other stuff in here which you can go through and configure to the way you like it okay so uh, task uh, scheduler has also got some things in there which you can deal with OneDrive here as well and again this is another one that you might want to deal with and take care of and uninstall OneDrive network sharing and also news and interest so take care of those uh, ones yourself and we're going to go through here home group again we don't want home group and we also um, we've done find my device let's have a quick look here for some other ones that we can take care of here so there is some other stuff inside the system area as well which we can do so let's go ahead and uh, take 
care of some of those. So let me go into system and inside here, uh, let's go first off to the operating system policies here. Again, clipboard history. Uh, this is to deal with all your clipboard history. Some people get a little bit paranoid about some of their clipboard history might be sent back to Microsoft. So if you want to turn that off and opt out of that, you can do. It just means any sort of clipboard history won't be kept on your system. And some people find it useful, but some people don't want it. So that's basically how you can disable it. Also, you've got allow publishing of the user's activities and also allow upload of user's activities. I definitely don't want that, so we can turn those off. And we can move on to another area, which is this one here, Storage Sense. Some people use it. If you don't use Storage Sense, then you can just disable Storage Sense and it won't be working on the computer. It will be disabled. And again, we can go ahead afterwards and turn all that services off afterwards inside the services area of Windows. And uh, turn off System Restore. If you don't use System Restore, then disable it and turn it off. And then we can completely... Uh, claim back some system resources especially if you've got old systems you don't want this sort of stuff running on your computer modern day computers can handle stuff pretty easily but if you have got a really old computer uh, then you definitely want to try to alleviate as much of the services that are running on windows operating systems to stop it from causing problems so restrict unauthenticated rpc clients this is to stop remote support uh, connecting to your computer again you can do that one if you wish and there's some other ones in here that we can take care of which is power management and you can set your power plan here for an active power plan and you can set this to enable and also set this to high performance if you want to run on high performance so that's that one taken care of and you can have a look at the other ones in there and disable what you like inside the power throttling settings and things like that. You can change them here as well. But be careful if you're on laptops and things like that because it can eat into your battery life as well. So let's go ahead and save those settings. And we can now take a look at some of the settings here that we've just uh, changed. So you can see now in the general area, all of this stuff has been grayed out. And it's also red saying we're not opting into this sort of stuff they're not collecting any data which is good and again active history i probably need to set a policy for that one i've turned it off but i think i need to get that to gray out properly and i can do that in the policies there clipboard again as you can see all set storage sense all off and this is how you can claim back your pc uh, and make it a lot easier for you to use uh, turn off advertising ID is another one that you might want to do. So you're opting out of the advertising side of things. And there's plenty of advertising inside Windows, as we already know. So again, setting this setting would be uh, a definitely a good choice to do. And uh, moving on to the sync part. So do not sync apps setting. Again, you can turn these sync uh, options off here to stop syncing this. If you do use these options, then again, please leave them alone. Otherwise, your sync will stop working. And if you do use that type of uh, stuff on your PC, then this is not for you. Just leave that option alone. But you might want to do some of the other ones. So Windows Calendar, again, I don't use it. But if you do, then by all means, uh, you can enable or disable that feature. And uh, we can then move on to the next area. Now, we're coming near to the end now. I'm not going to go through much more but you've generally got all of the basic stuff that you need. There is some other stuff that you can deal with on here. But again, that would make the video probably an hour long. So I'm going to leave that alone on the policy side of things because there's a few more you can do. And then again, there's some other more advanced stuff that you can do as well. So we'll just set this off as is right now. And this should be ample for most people and uh, you should have a much more better experience with Windows 10 and Windows 11. I've made this type of content for Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 uh, Pro versions, and I've also done it for Windows 11 Home and Pro. So check out my videos in my playlists, and you'll see them in there, and you'll be able to use those methods for any version of Windows that you've got to make it much more usable. Now, once you've done all these, save your policies 
and uh, you can export these as well so you can put them onto your computer if you format your PC you won't have to go through all this again you can even do this on a fresh install which I would advise you to do and then do all your policies and then create an image of that Windows and then basically you can just use that image to install next you want to clean up your menu and stuff like that you can go ahead and uninstall all of the bloat that Microsoft force on you but just by clicking uninstall any of the stuff you can't uninstall Revo uninstaller will take care of that and I'll quickly show you a little bit of that because I've already covered that in the video before so but just for people that might not have seen it I will quickly show you so you can see and we can take care of all of this and it will reduce all of this stuff inside here so let me go ahead and show you that right now so you can see how that works it's pretty straightforward so this is Revo Uninstaller Portable. It's a free download and this will allow us to uninstall Cortana and a bunch of other stuff here. As you can see, we can also scan for leftovers, select all the leftovers and then delete them. It's that simple. And just go through the list and remove all of the stuff you don't want, like Get Help, Microsoft Pay, Paint 3D, People, Skype, all that sort of stuff. Select all, delete. This will remove all the leftovers and it will remove them from the system. I've removed a ton of stuff here. You can remove more if you want to, but you can see the list has been reduced, and this will reduce the amount of bloat inside your uh, start menu. And again, you can replace the start menu with something more usable if you want to, but again, you should now see we're getting there, and all we need to do now is change the search box here to an icon, and we can remove the widgets, and we can go through here and take all of this off and turn it off like so. And you can disable that in group policy as well. So it's not on the system and you can remove a lot of the other stuff here. And then you can change the colors to your theme to the one you like. I'll quickly show you how to do that so you uh, can see. But basically it's looking a lot cleaner as you can see here. One drive is still on there and uh, some other stuff. Uh, but again, you get the general idea. You can uninstall OneDrive as well. So let's go ahead and quickly do the colors and uh, get it to something you like. So all you need to do here is go into settings and then go to personalization. Then go over to your color palette and then choose dark theme, uh, dark mode if you want to. I prefer dark mode to protect my eyes a little bit. And again, you can do custom colors if you want to. And you can come down here and make sure you're doing this for on accent colors on the following. And you can choose an accent color of your choice there. And there you go. We're all done. It's that simple. And it looks nice and clean. And basically, we've uh, uh, turned off a lot of stuff that is not necessary on Windows. Let me know in the comments section below whether you want to see more of this sort of stuff. I'll be happy to make those videos for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you guys have an awesome weekend and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.